You know, I heard about the potential asteroid impact everyone's been freaking out about back in January or whatever, but I thought I'd hold off on making a video about it until we kind of knew all the facts so I don't make a video that ages horribly almost immediately. I put it in the old memory bank and told myself I'd come back to it later. Of course, now we're in March and I was scripting the next video I had in mind when my brother called me, mentioned the asteroid, and I was like, oh god, the asteroid! I'm glad NASA aren't as forgetful as me. God, can you imagine? Oh no! Anyway, let's talk about whether or not we're about to be obliterated. Oh yeah, last week I did pose the question as to whether you guys liked the new intro. About half of you said yes, the second half of you said I should shorten it, and the third half said I should turn it sideways and shove it up my ass. I split the difference and shortened it. I was considering doing that anyway, honestly. And to those of you who think the intro is pointless, allow me to present my counter-argument. I like it. Well, hang on, you've just... No, I like it. This is brilliant. But I like this. Now we've cleared that up, onto the actual point of the video, which is, does the Earth currently have an itchy case of asteroids? Well, to begin, of course, not all asteroids are mountain-sized, multi-kilometer wide monstrosities like the Chicxulub impactor that wiped out the dinosaurs, but bear in mind, something around 20 meters across or larger hits the Earth about a couple of times per century on average. Thankfully, ones that size tend not to affect the whole planet in any substantial way, and since most of them fall in the ocean somewhere, we don't necessarily even notice them. The most recent, relatively devastating one was the Tunguska event. That was a 50 meter asteroid which exploded in the atmosphere and leveled several thousand square kilometers of Siberian forest back in 1908. Thankfully, Siberia is known for pretty much the exact opposite of having a dense urban population, so apparently no one was even there to get hurt when this happened, at least as far as we know. Still though, there's no reason why these big rocky assholes can't leap off the top turnbuckle onto somewhere more densely populated, so it pays to be prepared. In 2013, there was a meteor strike that we hadn't been able to see coming since, uh, apparently the asteroid had been hiding in the glare of the sun or some sh**. The asteroid was 18 meters across and traveling at 19 kilometers per second relative to the Earth when it entered the atmosphere over Chelyabinsk, another place in Russia. It fell over an inhabited area, which means it ended up being caught on a few different CCTV and dash cameras. It exploded in the atmosphere like the Tunguska one, so it didn't directly impact the ground aside from a few small fragments ending up scattered around in a few places, but the blast wave shattered a lot of windows and witnesses could feel the heat coming off the damn thing as it was falling through the sky. The event was bright enough to be seen 100 kilometers away. Over 7,000 buildings were damaged by the shockwave and 15 hundred people needed medical treatment for blast wave related injuries. My point is, meteor strikes aren't necessarily common, but they do definitely happen, and even a small one can cause some serious damage. It's not as if there aren't many of these things, there's tens of thousands of near-earth objects that we know of, and evidently there's a substantial and vague number that we don't even know of. At least the big ones, the continent and planet killers are easy to spot, so we're unlikely to be caught with our pants down by one of those. If we see an asteroid, we can learn a lot about it by pointing a few telescopes at it. Specifically regarding whether it's planning on bullying the Earth in the near future, we can look at an asteroid down a telescope scope, which naturally gives you the XY coordinates for where it is on the dome of the sky. Parallax and some other methods can tell us how far away the asteroid is, which gives us the final axis to know where it is in 3D space, and taking multiple measurements over time allows us to narrow down its exact velocity. Then we can just plug that object with its position and velocity into the very accurate model of the solar system that we already have, and we can tell where the asteroid and basically everything else in the solar system is going to end up being decades or even centuries from now. Now that's all good if we can see it, but Tunguska-sized asteroids, potential city killers if they were to come down over a major metropolitan area, are smaller and much harder to see until they're right near us. Thankfully, if something is likely to hit us, it's probably not coming from outside the solar system. It's more likely to be an asteroid from our asteroid belt that got perturbed for some reason and ended up in an orbit that comes nearby or passes over the Earth's orbit around the Sun. So it's fairly likely we'll be able to see it before it's on an immediate collision course. The typical whoopsie shit scenario is one of these being just small enough that we don't see it until only a couple of orbits before it's likely to smash into us. Speaking of which, on December 27th, 2024, astronomers discovered asteroid 2020 YR4 using the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, or ATLAS. ATLAS is basically a bunch of telescopes that scan the skies and try to identify near-Earth objects. One of their telescopes is in Chile, which in this case was the one that detected the asteroid. Now this asteroid has an orbit that crosses paths with the Earth and then swings out towards Jupiter before falling back in again. So we just saw it on this near miss, but it'll come by again in 2028, and on its next orbit after that, December 22nd, 2032, initial observations indicated there was a 1.2% chance of it slamming into the Earth, specifically into somewhere along this line. 1.2% was already motivating a few clenched sphincters, but the likelihood kept going up the longer we measured it. So it went from clenched sphincter status to, oh god, please, not yet another major historical event alert. By February 18th, it was at a 3.1% chance of hitting the Earth. To the untrained ear, that might not sound like that much, but imagine agreeing to flip a fair coin five times.
sometimes and having to drink bleach if heads comes up each time. In fact, I think the chances of being a ginge is only like 2%. If my younger brother was an asteroid, we'd all be f***ing dead. Oh, but at least it's not that big, right? That depends what you mean by big. If you're taking a picture with a banana for scale, you can always make it a small banana. I'm asking, how much smaller is the asteroid than Tunguska? I mean, it can't be that much bigger than the 2013 Chelyabinsk asteroid if we haven't seen it until recently, right? Ah, <laughs> funny that you ask that. How would you feel, go on, if I told you, uh-huh, that it is, here it comes, somewhere between 40 and 90 metres across. Oh my god, we're so screwed. Does the line go through anywhere with a high population? Allow me to answer that question with a question. Okay. How many people does Mumbai have in it? Oh my god. At times like this, it's important to look on the bright side. Given the current state of world affairs, I'm unusually amenable to being vaporised. Sorry to interrupt, this is just a quick message to say, statistically speaking, you're probably not subscribed, so I'll make you a deal. Press the subscribe button and I won't come over to your house and do this. Alright, thanks. Back to the video. Okay, I've actually been keeping some important context from you. As of the beginning of March, its probability of hitting the Earth decreased to like 1 in 120,000. As we look at the asteroid for longer and longer, taking more measurements, the estimated trajectory it'll take doesn't change that much, but the exact timing it'll show up at gets narrowed down. Its orbit will still pass through space on a path that intersects with all these places on this line on the Earth, but the asteroid will just be there at a time when the Earth isn't there, if that makes sense. Also, as we observe an asteroid that we think might hit, the chances of it hitting appear to get more likely as the range of times that it's going to show up at get narrowed down until the Earth eventually falls outside of that predicted range and then the estimated chances quickly drop to zero, which explains why the probability kept ticking up before. Although totally coincidentally there's now a 1.7% chance of it hitting the Moon, which would be pretty sick, especially since by 2032 we could arrange to point a load of cameras and telescopes at it and get as much science out of it as possible. In fact, you want to know what the impact would look like? Alright, check this out. Wow, truly astonishing. Let me do that again in case your mind was so blown by the premise that you forgot to open your eyes. Actually, the moon has a pretty small angular diameter, so if you're watching this on a phone, hold it out at arm's length and this is what it would actually look like in the sky. Actually, most of you live somewhere urban. Okay, here's what it would actually look like. The wonders of nature never cease to blow my mind. Alright, so we really don't need to worry, but the bigger question is, if we did need to respond to it, if it was going to hit, how would we have responded? Could we have prevented it from turning Mumbai into India's Detroit? Well, we'd be best advised to prepare a vehicle to launch by 2028 when it swings by the Earth again. Missing that window would make it increasingly difficult to actually get there in time. That rendezvous would be the most fuel efficient way of doing it, meaning we wouldn't need to jerry-rig a cartoonishly f gigantic rocket just to be able to make it there. Also, the sooner we alter the asteroid's trajectory, the more profound and effect we can have on the position of the asteroid before it comes back to suplex our shit. Annoyingly though, there's a chance that the probability could have stayed fairly high but still not been definite. It might have gotten to like 20% odds and then stayed there after the asteroid got too far away to measure it anymore, and we wouldn't have known for sure what to do until it swings around in 2028, by which time we'd already need to be doing something about it. Hmm, working together geopolitically to prevent a potential catastrophe in the future. Why does that sound familiar? <laughs> Why am I not hopeful whatsoever that this would work? <laughs> in the event of an imminent asteroid threat, several Several deflection strategies could work. We could use a kinetic impactor, which is a science way of saying we could wallop it right in the tits. We'd send a spacecraft to collide with the asteroid, altering its trajectory. NASA's DART mission successfully demonstrated this technique in 2022. Alternatively, we could do nuclear deflection, detonating a nuke nearby the asteroid to change its course. This method is considered for larger asteroids, but carries significant risks and legal considerations, not least the potential for the launch vehicle to explode and cover half a continent in burning plutonium or some sh**. We could use a gravity tractor, which is unfortunately not the sci-fi crop harvesting vehicle it sounds like. A gravity tractor just means parking a spacecraft next to the asteroid and using its very, very slight gravitational pull to slowly modify the asteroid's path over time. The choice of method depends on factors such as the time we have available, the size of the asteroid, the composition of the asteroid. We tend to think of asteroids as big solid chunks of rock, but sometimes they're made of rock, sometimes they're made of ice, sometimes they're just a big loose pile of gravel, so I don't know, maybe send a guy with a shovel. Just as important as the technological methodology is the political willpower to actually do it. Do you think the world would would come together to solve this in time? What if pushing it away from the Earth had the chance of pushing it closer to another country that wasn't at risk in the first place? You think Xi Jinping's gonna roll the dice on that when he could just not do anything and let it f*** up India to no detriment to China whatsoever? If you think the world is geopolitically ready for this kind of sh**, you have more faith in politics than I do. I wouldn't be surprised if half the world were to spend all three years arguing over contradictory plans that ultimately amount to a half-assed attempt that doesn't really work out, and the other half of the world spends their time actively f***ing with efforts to sort out the situation. The thing would be a goddamn disaster, I can just see it now. The United 
United States have most of the world's space capability at the moment. I'm pretty sure Trump would want to turn the asteroid into a real estate investment. Musk could agree to fix it in exchange for 100 billion in government contracts only to spend all of it on fighting DEI or some other equally stupid sh And if you think JD Vance would take the time out of his precious eyeliner schedule to help poverty stricken foreign people, I think you're out of your goddamn mind. So there you have it. 2024 YR4. It's not going to hit us or anything else. And frankly, thank God for that. Humanity has almost infinite future potential, but the emphasis really is on the future. As things stand, I can't trust this planet of semi sapient bonobo with alopecia looking assholes to mop up a minor atmospheric CO2 spill, much less avert a celestial catastrophe. Our intellect and theoretical engineering capability is incredible, but we have this tendency to mostly use our intellect to find more and more ingenious ways to punch ourselves in the face. Our species is like if Tony Stark spent all of his time perfecting nanotechnology so he could use it to shrink his own wiener. I'm sure we'll figure out all our weird nonsense sooner or later, but in the meantime, if the universe could keep its geological wonders to itself, I'm sure we'd all appreciate it. Alright, thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe if you want. I've got a bunch of cool YouTube membership perks if you're interested in joining the channel. And that's the Xandros channel at 5k subs. Well, hey, cheers guys. Only approximately 8 billion more to go. As always, I'll catch you in the next one. Over and out.